Thank you so much. Oh, it's beautiful. Aloha. <laughs> I am so happy to be here to help wrap up this climate change series. And what a series. Well, tonight I'm going to be focusing on the exuberant world of green buildings and perhaps the surprising role that green buildings can play in combating climate change if we all participate. What do I mean by a green building? Well, this is a sweet building. It's got a, clearly, clearly, a, you're getting worried now, but it's clearly, it's clearly got a vegetative roof. It's a sweet building. It's actually in Findhorn, Scotland, but that isn't exactly what I had in mind. Um, it's maybe like this elementary school in Washington, or the School of Public Nursing uses 80% less energy than the building next to it built in the 70s. Or maybe it's the uh, convent for sisters in Michigan, the largest residential renovation project in the country. Or maybe it's this million square foot prefab plant, Texas Instruments. Name a kind of building anywhere in the country and you can find a green example today. This is the world of green buildings. And what, what is similar across all of them is an attention to detail, to environmental performance in five major areas. In energy, certainly, energy efficiency and renewable energy. In how a site is developed. In how water is conserved. In the materials that are used. And then also, importantly, the indoor environmental quality. What makes it all work together is what we call an integrated design process. And by that I mean having key members of the building team I'm talking about the developer, the contractor, the landscape architect, the architect, engineers, getting together at the front end of the project to decide what are our goals for it. For example, good example in Portland, when the owner and the developer decided they wanted a building to be 50% more energy efficient. That impacted decisions all through the rest of the, the design performance, how they oriented the building on the site, what kind of materials they used. This is the key to today's high-performance, affordable, cost-effective buildings. And if we don't do it that way, as Amory Lovins with the Rocky Mountain Institute says, you can optimize each of the systems, but then you pessimize the overall system. How do you know if a building is green? Well, the standard definition for green in this country that Everett referred to is the LEAD, the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design Program created by the U.S. Green Building Council. And it's not only a set of design guidelines, it's also a third-party certification system, which is important, increasingly important in today's market of greenwash. And it's also a program for accrediting people, an LAP after your name, and I know we have at least one of them uh, here tonight, means that they have taken training and testing to be certified as a green building specialist. Uh, there are four different levels of achievement in LEED. That's um, uh, the, the reason for the various medals there, certified silver, gold, and platinum. Well, interestingly, some of the concepts that we see today are borrowing from the past. When we used to work more with nature, before the abundant, cheap fossil fuel age, uh, we used to actually think about ventilation and solar aspect and so forth. Now, this building, though, is a, the landmark Flatiron Building in New York City. And it was an unusual design at its time. It's thought to be the oldest skyscraper remaining in Manhattan. A clever design. Um, people used to place bets, I understand, on how far the debris would fall when the wind blew it over. <laughs> but it was clever in that it did work with nature. Everyone in that building, because of the narrow footprint, had natural daylight in. If it got too hot in the summer, they opened the windows. What a concept on the mainland. <laughs> and to prevent it from getting overheated, the windows were deeply inset and shaded. Well, we lost a lot of those techniques and approaches, but now look at this. This building going into Manhattan will house the New York Times and some other offices, borrows on some of the very same concepts, except in shaded windows, it has a high-tech curtain wall to bring daylighting deep inside the building. Every new skyscraper going into New York City is a certified green building. This is exciting. And to give you a feel for the ripple effects through the industry, think of a building as a product with thousands of moving parts. So when you order a green building, take this cutaway of a house, for example, you're getting into all kinds of different products that are green. You know, the lighting, the, the wood that you select, the windows, the appliances, the kind of heating system. 
This is just the tip of the iceberg. So thousands of manufacturers are creating new products and materials to compete in this market. The whole supply chain is beginning to tip. Speaking of houses, pictures worth a thousand words. This is the headquarters for the National Association of Realtors in Washington, DC. They wanted this certified building to reflect their values and the future of the industry. That's good news indeed. What a message that sends. And what so excites me about this is that here we see this market then attracting the high tech entrepreneurs and capital into this market for one thing. And second of all, he reflects what thousands of people are discovering is that you can mix your avocation and your vocation in this green building enterprise. Your aspirations, your business opportunities come together. And you know, even more is combining forces, all the different groups, the voters and the consumers and the practitioners and the elected officials. Because I think that's where we really start seeing acceleration. With the US Green Building Council in lead, it wasn't one sector only, it was government working with industry, working with environmental groups and consumers that produce things that we had no idea we were capable of producing. That kind of collaboration I think is so exciting. You know, I think it is sobering to look ahead to the consequences of climate change that are in motion now because we waited, but I can't think of anything more exhilarating for us to be agents of change today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you.